if you can see this. Oh, wow. But, but, but Joyce yes. wrote in it. No way. What is the most interesting conversation you've had about James Joyce? Crikey. Uh, <laughs> well, um, I don't know if it's conversation, but um, I think the most interesting sort of uh, day was uh, here in Athens, uh, a Bloomsday event was organised for the first time two years, no, three years ago. And that was, a, you know, it was a really nice uh, event with some some speeches, some uh, uh, performances and some music. But, you know, it, I think what I, I suffer from, maybe others do, is, is that, you know, it's quite hard to find people who are as interested in it, uh, you know, as I am. And, 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 you know, in my daily life with my friends, with my family and so forth, you know, everyone's very patient about it but you can't really talk about it until you get together with other uh people who are interested in it so that that bloomsday event was really nice and then uh, conversations online and, and not even conversations often but just texts and posts and in these facebook groups and so forth um yeah I, I, but it, I, I wish i could discuss it with more with people and always learn from people as well so you know yeah for sure I don't know I found so far like one thing that's really stood out with like a lot of people that I talk to is that like that social aspect of Joyce is like has been a lot of people's way into it but also something that they like love to continue and I don't I don't know have you ever read them I've heard a lot about book clubs and I'm in a UFC mm. book club right now myself have you ever mm. like been a part of a book club no I haven't uh, not for Ulysses nor for any book in fact I did think about trying to get one going uh, for Ulysses this centenary year but you know it never got I never got around to it but uh, no is it good that yes I good? think uh <laughs> I think so. I have really enjoyed the first time I read Ulysses was all by myself and sort of just, well, me and Don Gifford's notes, I guess. But um, <laughs> it, I think it was like good to go through it the first time by myself and sort of, you know, get myself mm -hmm. like, you know, familiar yeah. with the text. But ever since then, whenever I'm reading it, it's with somebody else. And I just find that like, no matter who you're talking to or how little they know about Joyce, they will know something in the text that you wouldn't have even noticed. You know, so it's really fun to yeah, bounce yeah. ideas off of each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've enjoyed the, uh, I mean, it's a, not exactly a book club, but I've enjoyed the podcast of, um, you know, this, uh, what's it called? Blooms and Barnacles. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, it goes into it a bit too deep, almost, for me. Okay. I just worry I'm going to be dead before they get to, uh, <laughs> you know, the bits that I want to hear about. But, um, but uh but yeah, I mean, that, that sort of stuff is really good. I really like that. Have you taken part in, I know I actually ended up like totally randomly. One of the people I interviewed was like, oh, by the way, I was like, did this little reading for the Blooms and Barnacles when they did the, I think Blooms Day yeah. last year or the year before. Yeah. And I was like, no way, I was in a read, like I did one of the readings too. So it's like, we had never met each other, but we happened to be in the same podcast episode because of, <laughs> Well, I did do one as well, so... Which part did you read? Yeah. Well, it was... Well, they've done two of these. Okay. And I was in the the, the earlier one. Um, and I read a, some lines from The Stragonians when okay. Bloom... Bloom is uh, musing over the, you know, over the, the time he, he... His first time with Molly. And then the two flies are stuck on the window, I don't know if you uh, remember that. Mm -hmm. Very, a very uh, kind of moving bit, I yes. think. And quite, quite a nice counterbalance to the famous bit at the very end of the book, of course, where Molly remembers. Um, so I like that, uh, and I read that. But also, um, there was an episode where they very kindly asked me on, onto the episode to talk about old, old editions of Joyce okay yeah that's so cool that was that was mm -hmm. wait well, are, are you the one who like 
owns a ton of like super old copies of Ulysses. Yeah. Oh my me. gosh, no way. I definitely <laughs> listened to that episode and I was like, this person is like who I want to be, but I don't know. Yeah. That's so cool. Okay, I didn't really, I'm clicking it together. Yeah. It's so interesting. I feel like really what you said about like finding that like Joyce community of who wants to talk about it is so true. Like once you're in, you're like, yeah. oh, I know all these people or like yeah. I've seen their yeah. work yeah. or, you know, heard them on an episode of Blooms and Barnacles, but... <laughs> What, what makes me laugh is that, that, that you know, because there's, there's several Facebook groups as well, isn't there? And, and it's just the same people in all the different groups. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> it just is. <laughs> you know, there's this hardcore of about, I don't know, 50 people who just keep commenting, <laughs> saying things. And then, but but you know there is the, and they're all in the same group. I don't, why don't we just scrap them all and just have one? You know? <laughs> That's fantastic. I do wonder. I'm like thinking about why we have different groups. I feel like the two that I'm in, yeah, I'm in multiple of them too. But the two well, that one I'm is in, for Ulysses. Yeah, is, there's ones for Joyce. You know, a bit wider. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but it is okay. still the same people. <laughs> That's fine. I would, that's an interesting distinction to make because the difference that I was thinking of is I'm in sort of like the James Joyce quarterly one, which I feel is very much so like, I have this article who wants to, you know, peer review it almost. And then like, there's the James Joyce fan club that's just like, this is great. Yeah, any <laughs> mention of Joyce anywhere in any kind of context in the media anywhere. It gets shared on there. Doesn't it? Totally. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. right though. Yeah, maybe that's the difference. Maybe they're kind of like you got the intellectual analysis, the literary criticism, and the James Joyce Causeway, and then you got all the trash in the. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't ones. think it's trash. I've got to say, well, like because <laughs> this project, you know, is kind of my like opportunity to like talk because I don't I usually do have to talk to all the academics and the intellectuals and I found these conversations like way more fun and honestly people well, are course. doing like yeah and people are doing I find like they're like just as deep in the text and like the amount of research that people do like just for fun is so cool to me I didn't realize but I really, I really admire all of the analysis, but sometimes I just think, you know, well, well you know, wow, and and and, but but what? How do you do it? Or I mean, where do you find the time? And where do you, there's a guy called Glenn Johnson on Twitter. Okay. I mean, I don't know what he does with his life. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't think he gets any money from just posting about Joyce. All, all the time. I mean, I don't know, 10 posts, 10 tweets a day or something. Wow. But anyway, where, where does he get all this time to do that? <laughs> so anyway, I mean, if you, if you ever go on Twitter, look up Glenn Johnston. It's just extraordinary. I mean, it's very impressive. But on this day, the Hungarian translator of Ulysses was born in 19... So, you know, what? How do you know? <laughs> and why? Where did that come from? I know it's it's really like wow. No. So you've got to be so into it. Uh, yeah, that's... I, I'm really into it, but you know, I, I, I can live without knowing the birth date of the Hungarian translator of Ulysses. <laughs> it's interesting to me, like a lot of people um, that I've talked to, anyway, sort of think of Ulysses as this like almost like transcending the text where it's more about how we talk about it and like share these ideas and stuff. But you are kind of in a unique position of having it as like a physical object and like all of these different versions of the physical yeah. object. Like, how do you think that, like well, what draws you to it as a physical object? Yeah, well, it is, it is the work. I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, I, and I've looked at the questions that you suggested as well, so mm -hmm. I can dip into that bit. So when I was at school, I got, um, I found myself reading a portrait of the artist as a young man. Okay. And I went to a Catholic school and uh, in England. You know, uh, wow. so I'm British Irish, but I, um, I've lived in Greece for 25 years. And, uh, and, and, you know, it was quite a tough Catholic upbringing. So it wasn't utterly dissimilar to, to what Stephen did. So, you know, I read the book and, and, I, and I liked it. And I, and I read a lot, you know, as a boy and, and growing up, and I still do. And, and so I've always liked to read. So, but I really liked his words and 
later when I tried to read Ulysses and failed, and it was always this, and then, you know, and I managed and all of that. So I've liked Joyce and I like what he writes about, and I like the way he writes, I like the modernism, I like I like his inventiveness. So I like it for, for the, for the, but I also separately have a great love and respect to just books, okay. books as objects, books as stores of knowledge. So just a cheap paperback, you know, I mean, I'll respect it, but also, mm-hmm. um, books as lovingly produced objects mm. and and you know so I, I you know I mean I've got too many books and, and I've got lots of books and I've got and but I collect you know good editions and interesting editions and early editions of other writers mm. as well so oh. so it's a bit like a, ve- a Venn diagram you know you've got I've got Joyce is certainly my favorite writer okay along with Two or three others, but but certainly he's right there. But then separately, I also like books. So there's this kind of bit in the middle of the Venn diagram, <laughs> sure. which is like Joyce books, <laughs> and and so yes. you know, great. So so <laughs> over the years, I've gradually been um, collecting them. You know, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Do you remember? I someone told me a fantastic story of like the first copy of Ulysses that they bought because they were like in Dublin had just like crossed the Lithium, so I can't remember which key, but, but like literally they saw a copy of Ulysses and the cover was like a picture of like the bridge that they had just crossed and like, that's why they bought it, right? Oh, I just, so, do you remember like, which was your first copy of Ulysses? Like why you bought it? I do, it was, it was an early edition. It was falling apart and I got it and I had it rebound. And that was the, I've got it here. So it's this. So this is the, um, I don't know if you can see, it says, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's all been rebound. But this is uh, an edition from Paris from 1925. It's the ninth printing. Wow. Uh, seventh printing, the big one, seventh printing. And, and so, um, I had a chance, someone had it and, and wanted to sell it and I bought it off them. And, well, you know, it's not very, very special. I mean, it's nice, obviously. But then getting it rebound as well. And that, and that was the one I, my first one. And, 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 and yeah, and then so obviously it's very special. Yeah. yeah to me. Yeah. No, for sure. That's amazing. I know my friend, I have not a collection at all like yours but you know like a couple copies of Ulysses at this point and my favorite one is still the one that I like bought for $15 when I didn't know where it was and like the covers falling off and all that but yeah that's yeah, right. the first one you read I, I think worn books you know books that are well worn mm-hmm. okay I don't want missing pages and I don't want um you know too much writing in them or something but but mm. uh but I don't have a problem with books. You know, I like books that have given pleasure over their lifetime and, you know, okay, they, they were a bit worn, a bit creased, you know, okay, that's fine. That's because they've been used. That's, that's okay with me. I mean, in the world of book collecting, that's a big no-no. You know, they want pristine, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I, okay, I, but but I don't mind too much. So so I like a book that's well thumbed. I mean I'm, yeah. Oh yeah, no, I I love it. Give, I think also because we were kind of talking about like this Joyce community, the community of readers. Sometimes like how worn a book is, you know, it gives you that idea of like the community before you. I don't like I have this. I have one of the like Odyssey press I think like 1939 edition, and it's, it's the fourth printing of the Odyssey press. Yeah. Oh, nice okay that's so cool (laughs) but yeah I don't know it's um I just love the fact it has these like little annotations in it mostly just like definitions of weird words but it stops about five pages into Proteus which not surprising (laughs) (laughs) that's a shame (laughs) I know you know so someone was there doing that you know I don't know you know however many years ago that's that's a lovely thought Yes. That's I a think, really you know, nice thought. Yeah. yeah. I think it's... Uh, that edition is quite interesting, mm-hmm. isn't it? The paper is like very, very thin. Yes. So it can be very slim edition. You know, it's uh, well, mm-hmm. two volumes, I guess. But, mm-hmm. but, um, but you know, it's very compact. And uh, yeah, India paper, that was called. 
Okay. It's like phone book paper. You know, I don't know if you ever had, saw phone books. Yes. Yeah. Very thin. Or some Bibles even might be printed with mm -hmm. that kind of paper just because it's so thin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a nice little addition. Have you read any else of Joyce's work? Or maybe you mentioned oh. that the first time you tried Ulysses, you kind of had to give up. So let me know yeah. if there's any that you intend on like never well, reading. Well, I've, I've never been able to read Finnegan's Wake. Okay. I mean, God, God knows I've tried. But I just don't, I just don't think... I mean, I know that I could sit down one page per day mm -hmm. and just make myself go through it. <laughs> and, and you know, maybe I'd get something out of it. At least at the end of two years, I'd be able to say, I read Finnegan's Wake page, mm -hmm. yeah, every page of it. But I think life's too short. I just, I just don't, I just can't get it. Okay. For sure. but, you know, uh, yes, I've read everything else. I mean, I've, you know, I've, obviously mm -hmm. I've read Dubliners and Portrait, and I don't. I'm not a big fan of his poetry. I must say, I think it's me a either. Bit, a bit. But um, <laughs> but you know, I mean, it doesn't matter. He wrote Ulysses. You know, wow. he was a god. He was a great <laughs> artist. Wow. Okay. I'll forgive him the kind of awful chamber music, which just makes me think. You know, what's that? You know, it's, it's so kind of, so kind of, um, it's everything that Ulysses isn't to me. It's so sort of uh, st stayed, S-T-A-I-D. Mm -hmm. It's so sort of prim and, and I don't know, I just, just don't like it. I mean, I like poetry, but I don't like, I don't like, uh, I don't think much of his. No, I agree. I agree. Especially in comparison to like, I don't, as soon as you're writing poetry, like at the same time as Yeats, like the, it's so high. The bar is so high. I didn't, yeah. you know, I didn't come for eight little lines of just, I don't know, random yeah. sort of like uh, yeah. lyricism, but. Yeah. I think he was so full of himself as, as a young man. Yeah. And I think it actually took hardship in, uh, it took, you know, when he, mm. you know, he ran away with Nora and, and then, lived a pretty tough and unusual life mm -hmm. uh, in Trieste and then through the war. And I think that kind of knocked him into shape somehow. Um, that's just my little theory. I think, I think he, you know, I think he, he had to go through something before he was able to write Ulysses. I mean, obviously he knew he was very special and very talented. He wasn't shy about telling people, but I think he needed the experience to to be able to let it just brew in his mind and be able to bring it out yeah that's yeah, yeah. a great book <laughs> it really yeah. is what's your <laughs> i don't know what like what is ulysses to you that makes it so great i'll tell you i, I think i know i mean i think it's on layers but but, but you know First of all, I like a book that is about the ordinary. Okay. You know, I've never been into things like I don't know, Lord of the Rings or uh, Game of Thrones mm, or, okay. or, you know, uh, uh, there's nothing wrong, I think. I think it's very right to, to examine the human condition through realism. And, you know, it, I mean, I love a good page turner, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. a good sort of, or a thriller and a movie, but this is just um, to, to, to great to, to, to produce great art out of, out of the ordinary. I think it's really clever. And then you know the observation in it because it's 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 just telling an ordinary account of an ordinary day. The the, the, the level of observation is is wonderful. And then you know he's telling a, a very ordinary story so he can be extraordinary in how he tells it because the subject matter is so ordinary um mm -hmm. so his, his the extraordinary the extraordinariness of it if that's the way to say it mm -hmm. is, is in the telling of it and not the subject matter i mean it's not a brilliant it's not a brilliant plot is it it's just <laughs> it's just but it's it's so it's it's the way he does it and and of course you know that's just brilliant it's just brilliant but god knows how he came up with that I mean I think it's just wonderful and then you know I mean I love the turns of phrases and all the 
the vocabulary is just lovely and funny and rich and it's just such a pleasure no i agree i agree and i think there's something about like joyce's writing really puts me in mind of like just like words as words i don't know if you have the same experience but it's just like every now and then like i don't know at the end of every sentence i just have to stop and be like like it just sounds so nice and it looks so nice that it almost like doesn't matter like you said like it doesn't matter what it's talking about or what it's saying yeah <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah i mean you can admire just the construction of it mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, from on, on close up the, the sentences the words the sentences mm -hmm. and then step back the whole thing it's it's all shape <sighs> yeah. it's just great and, and uh the The, and then, and then you know, these layers of you know, just that. Because if the book by Homer, the Odyssey, mm -hmm. had never existed, mm -hmm. but Ulysses was written as it was, we'd still be admiring it in this way for all of the reasons we've just said. Mm -hmm. But then there's this thing, there's this thing that actually, you know, it, it, it kind of parallels with, with the Odyssey, which is such a different book. It is such a fantastical book, and it's just... You know, so so now he's saying, apart from the clever technical way he did that, it, it you know, there's, there's there's the message that we're all we're all on journeys and we're all, you know, experiencing um, these kind of long journeys each day and finding our way back and all of the you know, brilliant. And of course, living in Greece and we're you know we're always having our the, I say our the Greek culture. You know, push down our throats. So we're all very aware of it. So here in Greece, you know, it's uh, that, that that knowledge of the Odyssey, and that that's that's made Joyce very popular here as well. Anyway, but uh, so there's so there's that layer of it as well. Mm -hmm. Then there's all the things, you know, the different organ or the, you know, and just how he gets <laughs> away with all of that. I mean, just just as if it's a challenge for him to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> set himself true. this challenge, and he could, and he rose to it, and he, and he achieved it. You know, there's a writer, there's another writer, there's a French writer called Georges Perec. Okay. And, you know, if you like reading and you like Joyce, you might like to read one of Georges Perec's book called um, Life, a User's Manual, which is a wonderful novel about, about a block of flats in Paris. And he goes from flat to flat, from apartment to apartment, and, you know, tells their story. It's all fiction. And how it all interlinks and all those lovely characters and there's just an ordinary block like thousands of other blocks of flats you know and it just there's a micro there's a world in this microcosm of a block of flats just like ah. Joyce does. Anyway and George Perret was a brilliant writer so he set himself a challenge and he wrote an entire novel without the letter E in any word. Wow! He, just, he could do it and he did it and it's it's uh and in French that's pretty difficult as well and <laughs> yeah, um, well kind of look, you know, so, um, <laughs> so you know, the, these, these brilliant word artists who are able to kind of create, knock into shape and mould like a sculptor with a piece of stone, this, this, this wonderful body of, of just words, I mean, we all know these words, but they can arrange them and put them in a way that, that people will admire them, I think it's brilliant. You know, when, when I know, Tom Clancy writes a novel, mm -hmm. just for example, you know, mm -hmm. congratulations, it's great. I probably, I've never read one. I've seen some movies and they're wonderful. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, it's about just pushing you along. It's just telling you a story. Mm -hmm. You know, very well, probably, Stephen King, very well telling mm -hmm. you a story. But this is different. This is, this is breaking new bands. It's telling a story in a way no one had before. And it's, and it's showing such virtuosity and such creativity and such art in its construction. Wow. You know, I really admire that. Uh, did you have any like preconceptions of Ulysses before you came to it? And was there a moment when you like must, came I think to there it? was. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I read the first page or two and I just thought, what's this? And you know, and that's sort of, <laughs> the thing that got me, the thing that unlocked the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the key that unlocked it for me. Yes. Was, and you said before, the sound of it was listening mm -hmm. to an audio version. Okay. Um, and there's a, there's, a, there's a recording, I mean, there's several recordings. Mm -hmm. A lot of people talk about the full dramatization of it that was done by RTE, mm -hmm. the Irish TV network, the radio network. 
um, in 1980, I think, 82 or something. But the, the one I listened to was is an actor called Jim Norton. Okay. Um, he's an Irish actor and and he reads most of it. And then Marcella Riord, Riordan uh, reads the Molly's Pub. And and this this is you know it was CDs then wow. you know I mean it, and yeah <laughs> and uh, I mean who gets CDs anymore? But it was CD. <laughs> It was like a box set of 20, 23 CDs, I think. And, you know, I, that got me into it. And that didn't get me into it, sorry. I was already fascinated by it, but I couldn't really access That brought it alive. Okay. And, you know, it was such a good reading. I mean, just just such a, you know, he didn't just read it. I mean, he acted it, he performed it. And, and that really brought it alive, I should say, for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so that, yeah. So that, I mean, because it's damn hard otherwise. Yes, I think, especially if you like read it silently. I don't, whew, yeah. it, it becomes yeah. so apparent that you just can't. Yeah. I don't... Yeah. Some bits of it, even especially. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, actually, you said about that the person who had that copy of uh, your, 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 your edition of it stopped mm -hmm. at Proteus. And it, but, you know, I really like Proteus, actually. Okay. It never bothered me. That I never really understood it. Okay. You know, I, I could, I've got enough to know this is Stephen. He's walking along the beach. Mm -hmm. He's thinking. Yes. And occasionally, he, you know, he's not just in his mind. Oh, there's a dog coming up. You know, or, or mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, and and then occasionally, actually, the narrator says, you know, he Stephen walked on, you know, something. So, but mm -hmm. the fact that when we're in there and he's jumping about, it didn't, it didn't bother me at all. I mean, I didn't get all of it. Mm -hmm. but um but uh that's okay it, it never really bothered me so i never mm -hmm. felt too lost or or worried mm -hmm. that i wasn't understanding it okay that's interesting i, I think i was understanding it i was understanding that stephen's walking along the beach and he's we're, we're speaking his thoughts as they run around in his brain that's fine that's all i needed to know yeah. and then you know every little reference whatever it was and all these things okay i don't need to know that i'm not stephen no so. i think that's such a great approach um, I, I don't know i i think that sometimes especially like on a first reading or especially on a reading like where you want the actual pleasure of the text and you know to to like get that experience with it it's yeah i don't know i don't think Joyce, you know, put all of that on there to like send us to the library every two words. Exactly. Like that exactly. would be reading the book. Yeah. Okay. It's it's very, it's very easy for someone to be worried that they're not understanding it. You know, because most times when we read books, we expect to understand it, or at the very least, if there's something we don't understand, we expect later the plot will allow us to go, oh, that's what that was about. Mm -hmm. but, but you know, it. But uh, so it's, you know, again, it's unusual what he did. Here I am making you read things you're never going to understand. Yeah, and it's okay. <laughs> You'll never yeah, understand. don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry. Anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Okay, I find it, like, I, I love the idea of getting into Ulysses, like, with an audio book. I don't know, I could just pick through, oh, like, big well, that, pile. That, I mean, that one that I described is mm -hmm. now downloadable on Audible. Perfect. Okay. I don't know if you know Audible, but mm -hmm. but um, but uh, Jim Jim Norton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does sound fantastic. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. He's really easy. Really he's got a lovely voice, lovely Irish voice. Yeah. Yeah, and there does seem to be like with the people I've talked to, but also like my friends that I've forced to like read you <laughs> over the years. But there does seem to be something to these sort of like moments like outside of the text outside of reading you know like things like audiobooks where you don't necessarily have the text right in front of you or little things like I don't know sometimes we'll get together on January 6th and like <laughs> read the dead but we'll like cast it so everyone's like reading for characters and that sort of thing so oh. I, you rope like, your friends into that yes <laughs> I mean <laughs> they're still your friends <laughs> Hey, at least it's with the dead. <laughs> it's yeah. Perhaps a bit. Oh, that's great. That's great. 
yeah maybe give it a shot you'll be surprised maybe yeah. how willing people are to do it but but yeah. I don't know do you have because you said that you're like most like interesting experience with Joyce is sort of this like outside yeah. of the text on Bloomsday celebrating but have you had any other experiences like that where it's sort of more like Joyce beyond the words on the page um not really um I well, I'm trying to think, but you know, I mean, I want well, one day our plan will be to go to Dublin and do a tour and things like that. Fantastic. But um, you know, I want to do one of those walking tours. But but I mean, I, I you know, here in Greece, okay, people are interested in Dublin uh, in uh, Joyce, and uh, we we okay. So there's the Irish Embassy here. You know, we we work together to and, and put on. Um, a little exhibition of material in a, in a tube station, an underground station, actually. Oh. Um, uh, you know, and, and people stop and they talk and they maybe, but but you know, it's rare that you meet people that actually know his work. Okay. And read it, so I do. I don't find it easy to to talk to people about it. No. If that was the question. Yeah, no, like whatever. <laughs> I mean, it really, I mean, thank God for, I mean, I don't know what I'd have done if I was into Joyce and Ulysses in, I don't know, the 1960s or something, because there'd be no way there's, you know, there'd be no internet, there'd be no, there'd be no way to kind of connect with people about it. Yeah, so. No, that's, I, I, I think it. yeah. yeah. it's been very handy having the like online community and podcasts yeah. and <laughs> things like that. And I think, I don't know if it's, you know, if I took a random hundred people mm -hmm. off Facebook, I'd probably have very little in common with them. But, but because this sort of, you know, and then, then you meet the people, meet people through online groups on Joyce and on Ulysses. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, you already kind of feel a kind of camaraderie with them. You know, you, yeah. you feel a kind of connection. Uh, but I think it's even more than that. Maybe there's something about people that have taken the trouble. I don't think Ulysses does it to you. I think you must already be, in a very wide way, something about you makes you willing to embark upon that, study it. And so probably the people that you meet, you, you probably have a better chance th to get on with them and, and be interested in them and so on. I mean, I've, I've, I've met five or six people through, through online Joyce groups that, that, that have subsequently become good friends. And, and, you know, we, we will actually talk about families and we talk about, you know, you know, so it, I think it, maybe it's a magnet for a certain type of, person maybe I don't know I don't think it does it to you I don't think you can take someone and you put them through the Ulysses machine and then they come out the other side all kind of like oh I understand I think it takes a certain <laughs> kind of person see what I mean for sure no I totally agree I yeah I, you've got to be you've got to be trusting of art and literature mm -hmm. to embark upon it I think no, I agree. I think that that, like, trust, I hadn't thought of that before, but I think that that's such an important word of just, like, the, I, I've also described it as, like, patience, like, for myself, oh, really? but I think, yeah, I don't know, it does, if you don't go into Ulysses with this sort of, like, okay, I'm, you know, you are going to take up some of my time and I'm going yeah. to keep at this and I'm yeah. going to go and find people to explain things to me or I'm going to accept that I don't understand them. Yeah, it's it's a lot of joys to ask of yeah. us, but we give it. I, yeah, I mean, I've, I've got a friend, um, Nigel, and uh, Nigel's an old school friend of mine and he lives in Edinburgh in Scotland. And he, he messaged me the other day and he said, look, I see all this about Joyce and 100 years of Ulysses. I know you're into it. Uh, he said, I, I, you know, I, I really want to have a go at it, but I'm, um, you know, I don't read a lot. I read on holiday and, you know, I'd, Da Vinci Code. You know. mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, what, how do you suggest I go for it? Because, you know, I mean, I know it's not a thriller and I know it's not a, a whodunit and I know it's not. And, and I said, look, um, 
you know, I know, Nigel, I know you like puzzles. And I know that you like challenges. Um, yeah, this is not a book that, you know, oh, I couldn't put it down. You know, it's not that kind of book. It's, you know, set, set yourself half an hour, two or three times a week. And, you know, either get the audio book, get a good set of notes, and just, just enjoy it. You know, it's not a race and it's not a... And, and just sort of get out of it where you can, but you, you will grow fond of it and you'll, you know, anyway, so he says he's going to do it. It's, it's that, it's, it's the willingness to approach it. And yeah, I hope he does. I think that, hey, this is your opportunity to put together a book club with him if you're in the yeah, state to reread it. I know, but... I know. <laughs> Seems like, but you know, the trouble with me, I'm, you found this going into a book club now. So, you know, Okay, it'd be nice, of course, but but I think you've got probably you've got to go into the book club with people who've had the same exposure to it as you have. I mean, if I was going in now with with people, I don't want to sound here yeah, at all arrogant, but if I was going in with people who are complete novices, yeah, it'd be lovely to witness their sort of their eyes opening and understanding it as they get and. and but you know, all the time I'd be. It's like it's like watching a film. It's like watching a film with someone, mm -hmm. and you've watched the film, you know, ten times, mm -hmm. and they're what, and, and you're watching it with them. And what you're really doing is you're watching them watch it. You're not. You're <laughs> okay. not do you know what I mean? You're because you, you know it. Okay. So, but I think if I went in with people who are of, you know who are also already familiar with it and enjoy it, and you know, then but that's kind of what we're doing on that podcast, I guess. But but. But uh, but I don't think I could do a book club now with people who are reading it for the first time because it would just I'd just be wanting to say no no let me tell you <laughs> it, it, like when you're watching a film watch it no this is a good bit coming up, good bit coming up. <laughs> so no, you can't do it you've got to be on this journey together I think okay yeah I see what you're saying I don't know I'm I'm in a book club now with I think mostly everyone else has never like hasn't really even read much Joyce. So are from, you leading from, it? Well here's the thing I was considering taking that approach but then I was like no like I want to see what they come up with and it's definitely like definitely if anyone has questions about the text I'm usually the one who knows the answer knows where to find the answer. So, you know? so you're not pretending to them that you're reading it for the first time? No <laughs> no. Because that could be really good you could kind of like say oh Maybe this is, you know, and they're like, what? wow, uh, how did you come up with that? <laughs> so good. But yeah, I found, I don't know, the most interesting, like, ex or like listening to them talk about it and being a part of the conversation as well is most of them, I think, aren't super familiar with the Odyssey either. And uh, so uh, it's been, I've actually, it kind of was difficult at first, but I was holding myself back from like saying the episode titles and talking about, you know, some of the more obvious like comparisons. Cause I don't, and we had this discussion with them actually where I was like, well, like if you hadn't read the Odyssey, what are you gonna do? Go like read its Wikipedia summary or get me to summarize it for you. Just like, that's not going, that's not, I don't mm. think the sort of, you know, like knowledge that Joyce mm. was using to like write around it. So it's been really, like a chat, you know, like a challenging new perspective, but also quite interesting to see like people read Ulysses without this framework of, you know, yeah. going in of like, it's a modern yeah. odyssey. But, but they must have volunteered for it. So they must have some of that willingness, that trust. Yes, I think that that's the thing. And it's, it's almost, I feel probably like more trust in it than I had because they're like, just going into it as itself rather than, you know, as, okay, I know the Odyssey, I want to see what this does. How far are they into it now? Um, we're about halfway through. I think we're going to talk about Cyclops in a couple of weeks, so. Well, that's a good one. It's just lovely to sort of talk to someone about it. And it's, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, anything that can be done to kind of broadcast the awareness of, of this great, great piece of work and and also i find fascinating the story of its publication okay. and how how he struggled to, to get all of his work printed but but you know this one and the whole sylvia beach and shakespeare and company and it's just such a great story 
I think it would make a great film for publication. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it really would. There's a lovely film called Nora, mm -hmm. which is a really nice film um, with Ewan McGregor playing Joyce. Yes. Um, and, 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 you know, just in the, uh, but, you know, a, a proper film about his, that goes from, I don't know, from his m moving, you know, from the First World War or something, right through to the publication, right through to the, uh, the, the court case when it was pronounced, you know, uh, not obscene. And, and, and uh, I just think that's just such a great story in itself. There's a really good book, you may know it, uh, called The Most Dangerous Book. For sure, yes. By Kevin Birmingham. And that, mm -hmm. that's a real, I think that's a really good book. That, basically, that, that would be a great film. Okay. Have you ever seen, um, uh, it's a play by Colin Murphy. I think it's just called like the United States versus one book called Ulysses. Um, I, I don't know. It's essentially a, a movie. It's a like, well, it was going to be like a play, like a stage play, but then it was supposed to come out in like 2020. So actually the first version of it was made for Zoom. And then I think now they've done a radio version. And then okay. this year in June, they're going to do it on stage. Who is it by? Uh, Colin Murphy. Okay, I'll look it up. Yeah, for sure. It's, I'll look it up. Yeah. I think, he, I think I, he sent me the link um, to the radio version, so I can send it to you too, if I... Great. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, I'd like to. But yeah, um, but yeah I, I think it's so much just, great. I oh, just want to show you one book. Okay, yes, of course. Uh, this is uh, something I got not long ago. Um, that's, that's a box I had made for it, and it's, uh, it's wow. in another box. It's a really, really damaged copy um, of the ninth printing. It's really damaged, if you can see this. Oh, wow. But, but, but Joyce yes. wrote in it. No way! Yeah, Get out of here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on, I just. Uh, uh, hang on. Then, if you can see that. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! So he's written Jeez. to Alex Ponizovsky, mm -hmm. James Joyce, Paris, uh, December nineteen twenty eight. Ponizovsky was. Briefly engaged to his daughter Lucia. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty special. That is very. Very pleased with this. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, I can like sense the giddiness. I feel like I'm. Getting I know. This. I know. I guess sometimes you know I'm just like a bit fed up or something. This is sounds so nerdy, but yeah. you know I'll take it out and I just you know I just think Joyce. You know Joyce. Not only did he have this in his hand and he wrote on it, but. It was his achievement as well. It wasn't just some other book. It was, he wrote it on his book, Ulysses. And it's just, you know, God, you know, it would have been great to have met him, wouldn't it? Yeah, you would want to meet Joyce. Wouldn't it be lovely to have met him and just oh. sort of got him for the evening and talked to Joyce, yeah. Would you, anyway. any, any specific questions that you would want to ask him or just like a chat? Oh God, I just like to get drunk with him, I think, and uh, just <laughs> let him talk, which I think he would. Oh yeah. And just, 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 yeah, just do that. I mean, I, yeah, I could, God knows why I'd ask him, but I mean, I, I tell you what, do you know, I don't know if you know Frank Budgeon, who was his mm. friend in, um, who was a painter, British painter, living in Paris, living in um, Trieste with him, wasn't it? Or Zurich, Zurich. And, um, you know, that guy, I mean, he, he just, I mean, jo Joyce was begging him to come and speak after they were kind of in different towns. He was begging him to come and speak. You know, that guy had so much time with Joyce, just sitting there listening to Joyce, <laughs> drinking with Joyce. What a, what a lucky guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you like other writers? Oh my gosh, I <laughs> I do none none quite as uh, fervently, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, I don't. It's so hard. Whatever people ask me after sort of like stewing in Joyce for a while, but yeah. <laughs> I don't you know. Do I need to get out of it sometimes. Like, yeah, you? I agree. 
I know. I mean, I know that I will always enjoy it. I will always look into it. I'll mm -hmm. always find something new. Mm -hmm. I'll never understand it to the extent that some of these people do, you know, Kelly and, and then also, uh, you know, all the, the academics. That's fine. I don't mind about that. That's fine. But I'll always enjoy it, which is a lovely thought, you know. I've, I've enjoyed, it's given me so much pleasure and it will continue to do so. And that's just wonderful. Um, and I'm quite certain that one day I'll sell all my books to, to pay for my, you know, help pay for my retirement. And that's fine. I'll just have a couple of copies, you know, of, 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 of good sturdy paperbacks that will always just carry on giving me pleasure. That's fine. Do you see what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, isn't that a lovely thing to think it will always be there for me and it will always, I'll always enjoy it. That's so fantastic. No, I think that... Because you, know, you, you wouldn't say that about a lot of books. You know, a lot of books, you, mm -hmm. you know, you read it. Who did it? Agatha Christie. Who did it? Who did it? Oh, what good, that's clever. That twist is clever. But then you know it. You don't know. go back mm -hmm. and admire the construction and the... So, so that, that, that makes it quite rare. I think there are many books like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, that will always be there for me. Yeah. That's fantastic. Have you ever, just like thinking of sort of other authors that like really stand out in my mind as like, especially like rereads and things that'll be, I wonder about your thoughts of like this sort of definition of like the encyclopedic novel. So, you know, Ulysses is in there, and then also things like Thomas Pynchon's Gravity's Rainbow or David Foster Wallace's Infinite Jest. Which I read for the first time this year. Okay, me uh, too. Me Infinite too. Jest, and I really liked it. And okay. I, 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 I did not find it. I mean, there, there were little bits that they kept coming back to that I thought were a bit... So there's the, um, the Canadian and the American Secret Service guys, the one... Yeah dressed up as the woman and the other in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, they, they keep coming back to them. And, you know, that wasn't one of my favourite bits, but I yeah. went through it. Um, but I loved the, 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 the volleying backwards and forwards, like a tennis match, yes. uh, between, between the tennis academy and the, the rehab. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, just, I loved it. And I thought okay. it was brilliantly written, brilliantly mm -hmm. written. What, what's what's the big thing? What, why is it so difficult to... I mean, it wasn't difficult to read. And I'm not saying it was absolutely easy, but it wasn't that bad. No, I... Oh, I thought it was, I thought it was great. Okay, good. No, I wonder if this is a... I don't know, not to say that you, like, have to read Ulysses before reading Infinite Jest and these other things, but I do find that, like, I, I read all of those books quite around the same period as each other, sort of like within a year, I would say. And I really found that like, like reading Gravity's Rainbow made Ulysses so much more approachable to me because it was easy in comparison. And then I felt like reading Infinite Jest felt way more approachable to me because I was like, well, I've already been patient enough to get through Ulysses. This book isn't difficult to read. It just takes time and it takes my commitment. And I know I can do that because I've read Ulysses, you know? Uh I never, I never got into Gravity's Rainbow. Right, okay, it's it it's an odd one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but, that's um, a very nice copy. Yeah. So yeah, and it's very uh, neatly because it's not mm -hmm. been, I've not been <laughs> opening it very much. I mean, I found it. I don't know. I, I started. Maybe I should try it again. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll say. I don't know if this is like good, like advice or something people would want to know but Ulysses while you're reading it is so you know like abstract and wordy and kind of what's going on but when you get to the end you understand that like you've been walking around Dublin you know that's what's happened yeah. and then with Gravity's Rainbow it's a lot more like while you're reading it I, I and I found this too like while you're reading it's like yeah this makes sense but the second you step away from the text you're like it just like flies out of your head and it's like what happened you know but so i don't so should i try it i vote yes i thought it was uh, it's it definitely requires a reread like i'll say after my first reading i could remember maybe like two plot points for you but i think that yeah I, and you'll have to tell me once you've read them but i feel like those three books kind of have in common the sense of like 
they require or like they ask such a commitment of you that by the time you get to the end you just want to restart almost yeah you're so invested in it yeah yeah and that's that's because when I was growing up I mean you know growing up in England we -hmm. were made to read Dickens okay Mm -hmm. okay so everyone's read Great Expectations (laughs) and Cities and Oliver Twist and David Copperfield but then you know most of Dickens's novels are huge, you know, because they came out in, in, in episodes mm-hmm. and people in magazine, in a magazine format and every month and people would buy it. He, he was writing, you, you know, he had to write 12,000 words every month Jeez. and it was always 20 episodes. And, and, you know, and he just churned this stuff out. But of course, it was great. So huh, I've never been put off by big books because we were made mm-hmm. to read these massive books um, okay. growing up. So it didn't phase me. Um, mm-hmm. But... Uh, but it's funny that people do get put off that. Is there anything that will be like memorable for you about the conversation that we had? I, 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 this is probably it now. I mean, you, if you ask me that question uh, that you asked at the start, because I just don't talk to people about you. Yeah. So, so it's lovely to talk to you about it. Um, it's just absolute pleasure. I mean, I hope it will be of some tiny contribution to what you're doing. But I mean, it's it's absolutely lovely, and it's. Uh, um, you know, I could talk forever about it and books and joys. Mm. I mean, it's it's just great, isn't it? This is just it's just nice. So so um, good lucky you. You know, you're just getting to meet people and talk about Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many of these do you do? You know, you, oh my you, god. Um, <laughs> I mean, how many? Well, originally, I, I I didn't know. I just kind of like put out a, you know, like that. Uh, like a post to see who all was interested. At first I thought it was just going to be like, oh, maybe a couple people are interested sort of thing. But I think I've already talked to like over 20 people. And <laughs> and I think, you know, everyone keeps telling their people who are excited about it too, sort of thing. So yeah, it's, it's well, really- I mean, I think that shows you, that shows yeah. you that all these people desperate to talk about it. No, totally. I totally agree. But I mean, maybe I don't want to like plug my own work too, but I do think there will also hopefully, hopefully be a bit of like that parasocial element. I think there's that sort of sense of, you know, even if you weren't part of the conversation, I think people would still, you know, be interested to see like what we talked about or even just see that these conversations are happening at all, I think is really like reassuring and like justifying. Yeah. Yeah. it's a good point. I mean, it's a lot of work, but if you were to edit it down to, mm-hmm. to the, you know, what you considered the, the best bits of the best sort of, mm-hmm. it could be, it, it could really be a wonderful kind of info trailer to, to people who are curious. Joyce Curious. That's, that's, <laughs> Joyce a, curious. that's a condition people can be in. Joyce, <laughs> cu- Joyce Curious. And, and uh, and, 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 you know, it could really like, wow, you know, that could tip them to say, right, I am going to do it. I did a talk at, um, on the Bloomsday uh, it, three years ago. And I said at the start, I said, I've got two questions for everybody, first of all. And, you know, hands up if, before you heard, heard about this evening's event, hands up if you'd heard of Joyce and you. Of course, everyone puts their hand up. I said, right, hands up if you've read the thing. You know, it's about... A quarter. Wow, you know, okay. so there are people who are curious about Joyce, but, but mm. obviously haven't taken the plunge.